means this thing's unlocked. Leave no one behind. Huh. I don't remember what we were doing at this point. They took the elevator up to see. Oh, we split up. Just search the open the doors. That's right. Once there, they headed back toward the main hall and the central staircase. It didn't take them long. Look, it's Seven and Lotus. They didn't look happy. We've got a problem. Clover is gone. Yeah. What? I don't remember that. And she was gone. There were yeah. four rooms on the other side of door one. Yep. And I remember all that. Couldn't find her, and then we all went to the. Ended up going back here. Junpei and Jin ran to the large hospital room together. As quickly as they could, they searched around and under the beds. And She's the not here. No, she isn't. All right, uh, just in case, we should go take a look in the shower room. Shower room? That's where her brother is. She might have gone to see him. Jun bit her lip. She knew, as Junpei did, that there was only one thing in this to see in the shower room, and it wasn't pleasant. Well, we might as well check, right? This part. Let's go. Happen. That was when the screwdriver is stuck between the door and the Good. frame. Good. We can still get in. We should thank Seven later. Seven's the best. Junpei and Jun slipped in through the door and moved down the hallway, and stepped into the shower room. No luck. Damn. Yeah, I don't think she's here. Jun's voice was faint, and she placed her hands over her mouth. Her face looked a little green. The smell is horrible. The stench in the room was almost unbearable. It had grown far more unpleasant since their last visit. If Junpei had eaten a lunch, he would have been, had difficulty retaining it. He wanted to leave the room as soon as possible, but... He had to be sure. And the only way to be sure was to check the other side of the divider. Let's check the back, just to be sure. Jun offered no resistance and nodded weakly to Junpei as he headed through around the divider. He stopped at the corner and turned his head. No, she's not here. As he had expected, Clover was nowhere to be seen. The only thing that on the other side of the divider was a dead body lying in the reddish brown puddle of dry and drying blood. Snake. Just where did your sister go? Junpei whispered to what once was Snake. <sighs> or not Snake. He'd asked rhetorically, of course, and as there was no way he'd get an answer, he gave a deep sigh. Such a horrible way to go. The skull shattered, the left arms hideously twisted. Huh? Wait. The bright white of the Olna was clearly visible through the remains of skin and muscle. Bright white. Olna. Bones. The pieces fell into place. Junpei remembered something Clover had told him in the laboratory. My brother's left arm is... Um, it's not like a normal person's arm. It's prosthetic. The accident hurt him really bad. Of course. Of course. Why didn't I realize it earlier? Clover had told Junpei that Snake's left arm was prosthetic. But what the the left arm of the corpse behind the divider was cl quite clearly a real human arm. Or at least it had been once. That meant the corpse. Um, Jumpy? Jun's unsure voice and jo Junpei's suddenly strange behavior drew her, his attention back to oh, her. sorry for making you wait. Let's go. Junpei and Jun headed back toward the large hospital room. They stepped through the door and out of the shower room. Gotta find Clover and tell her that's not her brother. That's dead. Down the hallway they went, searching for Clover in every corner. They'd reached the stairs when... Seven appeared breathless and yelling. <sighs> Junpei! June! Where were you guys? Hanging out? <laughs> he looked pale and his face was drawn. Something terrible had happened. Junpei's breath caught in his throat. Did did something happen? Seven drew a shaking hand across his face and gulped down air. Seven, you and June, come with me. I need to show you a door. Clover is... Dead. Clover is dead. Not a surprise. Cover it up. Because she knew the truth about her brother. That's why. I found her in the first class bathroom. Never mind. That's weird. Why is she in the bathroom? In the first class bathroom at that. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. 
All sound had ceased for Junpei. The world was an empty, muffled expanse. Then he began to hear his own breathing. Fuck. <gasps> Jun's mouth moved, but he had heard nothing. <gasps> she tried to move once more, uh, then her energy was gone and she collapsed against the wall. He could have helped her, but he didn't. He hadn't, and now she was dead. So he stood there, frozen in place. Clover. Clover. Why? Why did this happen? He forced his body to move. Each step like another nail pounded into his heart. Finally, he was in front of her. He knelt and placed three fingers against Clover's neck. Dude, there's a, po a pool of blood under her. No pulse. No breath. <laughs> but she was still warm and her eyes were closed peacefully. It would have been easy to think she was asleep. Easy, that is, were it not for the slowly expanding puddle of blood beneath her. He traced its source to her back. A gash just beneath her shoulder blade. Was the weapon a knife, perhaps? If it was a knife, the killer had taken it when they left. When he closed his eyes, he saw Clover's smile. Clover! Her innocent smile. Her energy. He would never see her smile no way. again. He could have done something. He could have helped her. His stomach twisted itself into a sickening knot. Let's... Let's get out of here, June. Junpei lifted a limp June from the floor and carried her from the bathroom. Are you alright? It was a foolish question and he knew it. Yes, I, I think so. Her voice was weak. The fever had gone down, but the emotional scars she had received was not likely to recede it as quickly. Junpei laid his hand on her shoulder and they walked back to the bathroom. You should get some rest. Here, the bed. Can you sit? Yes. She nodded once and stared at the floor. There were four others in the room. Ace, Lotus, Santa, and Seven. They all stared at nothing, their faces drawn and tired. One of them killed her. Not Seven, and probably not Lotus. Santa or Ace killed her. After a while, they drifted into the bathroom to see Clover's corpses them, corpse, corpse themselves. Once everyone was back in the bedroom, Junpei walked slowly to the center of it and looked around as the as the slumped figures gathered. Who there. was the first to find the body? Me. Seven spoke from behind Junpei. He turned around. Seven's hand was up. Why did you come to this room? To look for Clover. Why else? No shit. I found her body in the bathroom. As soon as I did, I ran outside. I got to the top of the stairs by the casino and yelled as loud as I could. Hey, guys! I found her, but it's bad! She's in the bathroom in the first-class cabin! Come quick! Or something like that. Then I went back to the bathroom. Ace, Santa, and Lotus showed up real soon after that. But I guess you two hadn't heard me or something because you didn't show. So I took off down the stairs to look for you. After that, I, I mean, you know the rest, right? Exactly. Junpei nodded and closed his eyes. There is one more thing you need to ask. Seven, th there's one more thing I'm worried about. What? You stuck one of those plates in between the door and the frame, right? Why did you do that? Because there's a safe. <sighs> Come on, didn't I already tell you that? I did it so that the door wouldn't lock. So we could come back to this room? Oh. You think I did it? I don't, personally. Well, I don't know. That kind of depends on what you say, doesn't it? For crying out loud. <laughs> Seven sighed and shook his head. Follow me. There were two doors standing next to one another. He opened the one on the right. A closet? Yeah. Seven stepped inside. He stood in front of one of the shelves that filled it and gestured toward a small box. The box was a small metal cube. He looked at Junpei. This is the reason. This safe. We couldn't open it when we were getting through this room. I figured there might be something pretty important in it. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I figured eventually we might figure out what the numbers are for the safe. Mm -hmm. And if we did, I didn't want to screw around with door 5 again. Exactly. So, I put the plate in the exit door so we could get back in that way. You get it now? No, it's smart. Yeah. It's really smart. Junpei nodded and looked at the safe. He grabbed the handle and shook it. Figured it wouldn't open. 
It was locked as it had been when A7 found it. Huh? There was one change, however. This is... Just under the safe was a pile of fi fine reddish-brown powder. Rust? Junpei stared at it, considering. If there's rust here, that means... Has someone opened the safe? Hmm, she walked in on someone opening the safe. That's why she was killed. Junpei left the closet. Seven followed him back to the bathroom bedroom. Uh. Uh. Huh? It was cold and quiet. No one spoke. They sat frozen in place by shock and grief and fatigue. The room felt tiny and oppressive, and the thick metallic smell of blood filled the room. <sighs> Junpei turned and headed for the living room. Anything to get out of there. Maybe there's another clue. Anything that might lead us to discover who stabbed Clover. As quickly as they could, they searched around and under the beds and in the corners. His eyes caught the door. The door that led to the passageway, the number no, uh, door number behind five. Behind this door, the ninth man's body is behind there. Maybe I should have another look at it, just in case. Quietly, he pushed the door open. Yeah. The smell hit him like a blow to the face. Oh, the hell? This, this smell is... Yeah, still gross. His lungs contracted, unwilling to inhale such fetid air. Acid boiled up from the base of his stomach, churning what little food was there into a violent froth. <laughs> you okay there, buddy? It was too much for him, and he vomited. A thin stream of yellow water and bile splattered onto the floor. Gross. <sighs> he wiped his mouth weakly and stared at the dead body. Chunks of torn flesh lay in an arc around the body. What remained of its intestines had slid onto the floor. The pool of blood that framed it was half dry, but so thick that it had been taken on a mixture not unlike that of an egg yolk prepared sunny side up. On the floor next to the broken mass of the man's head lay his glasses, cracked spidering across the lens as someone took the ninth bracelet. The bloodstains near them had already dried like scabs on the floor. Wait. That was when he noticed. It's, it's gone. His bracelet. It's gone. Someone stole it. It was right next to the glasses. But now, it was gone. The number nine bracelet was gone. But why? Had someone taken it? He was turning it over and over in his mind when he heard Seven's voice. Huh? Where'd Junpei go? It drifted out to him from the living room. Uh. Junpei walked slowly out of the hallway. Oh, there you are. Were you looking for something in the hallway? Yeah. Seven looked up as Junpei entered the room. Yeah. Did you find something? Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> He thought for a moment, but before he responded. No, nothing. Technically, it wasn't a lie. He hadn't found anything in a way, and in fact, that was the problem. Something he'd expected to find hadn't been there, the ninth man's bracelet. What's up? Ah, uh, well, I wanted you to take a look at something. Okay. What is it? Seven le led Junpei back to the bathroom. Clover. As Clover's corpse came into view, he felt his heart flip and then fall to the bottom of his stomach. <sighs> Something between a sigh and a groan escaped his lips. What was it you wanted to show me? His voice was hollow and empty. I searched Clover's body again. A real shame. She was stabbed once in the back, probably by a knife or something. And I found this. As he spoke, he moved around Clover's head. He then knelt down and flipped to open her right hand. What? Is that note? She was holding a piece of paper. I haven't actually looked at it yet. Didn't want to disturb the crime scene, you know? Basic stuff. Yeah, yeah true, true. Well, I did borrow one thing. What? He wasn't sure what he meant, but it likely didn't matter. The paper was more important. I'm opening it. Probably her bracelet. He picked it up and carefully opened it. There were two sentences written on it. Truth had gone, truth had gone, and truth had gone. Okay. Ah, now truth is asleep in the darkness of the sinister hand. The fuck? What is this? Some kind of secret code? 
Seven peered over Junpei's shoulder at the note. Just Junpei stepped away from Clover's body and into the living room. He began to pace, attempting to decode the note. Hmm. A code. Clearly. First code was likely the phrase, sinister hand. Sinister hand means the right hand, the left hand. Right? No, that's not right. God damn it. In heraldry, the term sinister was used to refer to the left side of a coat of arms. Well, fuck you too. <laughs> or more accurately, it referred to things on the left side of a bearer of a coat of arms. How the fuck am I supposed to know that? Left hand. Hmm. The left hand. What does the left hand mean? Junpei looked at his own left arm. At the bracelet on his wrist. Does the darkness of the sinister hand have something to do with the bracelet? Probably. He examined the bracelet closely. There's two things sticking out on either side of the face. The left and right sides of the face. Left and right. Left and right. Left and right. Right and left. Right and left. Truth is gone. Truth gone. Hmm. Truth gone. I need those two words. How about reading it aloud? What else could gone and truth mean? How about switching the sentence around? Gone had truth. Yeah, it's not as. I'll just go with that. What else could gone and truth mean? Because the other things don't really make sense. Truth, of course, means something that is correct, something that's fact. In other words, something that is right. And then le gone is left. So right, left, right, left, right, left. So that's what you have to do with the safe. That's the combination. You could then safely assume that gone means left. Though, to be fair, that doesn't tell me how far right it has to go. After all, after someone left, they were gone. Exactly. But in this case, they clearly refer to their directional homonyms. Then truth equals right, and gone equals left. Junpei looked at the bracelet again. The left and right of the bracelet. These two things sticking out. So if I... Press them in the following order. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Truth had gone, truth had gone, truth had gone. Right, left, right, left, right, left. And then... One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One after another, eight numbers flashed on them, then off of the face of Junpei's bracelet. Wait, did it just... He checked one more time to be sure. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Okay, I'm going to probably just write these numbers down real quick because uh, I, I'm not going to memorize those numbers probably. Though I will try. I'm just saying I probably won't. Three, eight, three, four, two, one. Huh? Hey, what are those numbers? No idea. Hmm. Junpei didn't answer. He couldn't answer. He had no idea what they were either. Besides, he was sure he wouldn't forget the numbers in the order they came in if he said anything. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Muttering the numbers to himself over and over, Junpei headed toward the bathroom bedroom. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One, four, three, eight, <laughs> three, four, two, one. One four three eight three four two one. Okay. One four three eight three four two one. One four three eight three four two one. Before long, he found himself in front of the safe again. It well, its lock was the only device he could think of that required a sequence of numbers such as the ones he had just discovered. Besides, someone had opened the safe at least once already. Had Clover come to the bedroom to open it? <sighs> Junpei slowly dialed the number on the bracelet it had given him. One to the right. Four to the left. Four to the left. Three to the right. And... Oh. Thank God I didn't actually need it. Oh, thank God. Though I guarantee you that's the code that needs for the coffin as well. Finished. Bingo. I knew it was for this. A small telltale sound, sound of a lock opening. He grabbed the handle and took a deep breath and pulled it out. Oh, is this some sort of note? Inside was a piece of paper. It was roughly the same size as the one Clover had been holding. Let's see. God. 
Three, two, one, go. Junpei picked it up. This is what it said. Fact one. The Nonary game was played once before, nine years ago. Fact two. The person with the number two bracelet attended the game nine years ago. Fact three. It was planned by the following four people. Cradle Pharmaceutical CEO. Gintaro Hongo. Cradle Pharmaceutical's Chief of Staff. Nagisa Nijisaki, Cradle Pharmaceuticals R&D Supervisor, Terugaki Kubota, Kubota, Majority Shareholder in Cradle Pharmaceuticals, Kegechi Mushashido, sure, CEO, that's probably the same as like the head boss, well no it is the same as head boss in this sense, so Ace is really Gintaro Hongo, I must punish them. For the innocent lives they sacrificed. This is the only warning they will receive. That innocent soul must souls must be sa might be saved. I know state I now state the truth. Zero. Junpei left the closet. <laughs> there were five people waiting for him in the bedroom. Ace, Lotus, Santa, Seven, and June. He looked at each of them in turn and then slowly paced his hands in the pocket of his vest. Sorry, but do you think you could all come with me? Come with you? I want all of you to go to the big hospital room. Okay. Why? There's something I want to be sure of. What do you want to be sure of? I, need to I want to know if the person I suspect is really the culprit. I believe it is true. Wait. It's Ace. Then you're saying... Ace is Gintaro. Hongo. I do believe... Yeah, I think I've got it figured out. I think it's pretty easy to figure out. I know who killed Snake and Clover. The atmosphere in the room changed. Grief was sud su suddenly gone, replaced by a tension like a strap of leather stretched to its limit. But that means Ace isn't... isn't, uh, zero. Then Santa probably is. I wouldn't be surprised. Santa's probably zero. Because he was getting him out, he probably got him out of the rooms once, you know, they left. He probably ended up shooting Ace. Saying this is for all the innocent lives, he killed blah 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 blah. Five sets of eyes stared at Junpei. You pretended not to notice. Anyway, if you could all please move to the big hospital room. I'll explain everything as soon as we get there. Then, almost as if on cue, the bell began to ring. They all heard it. It was the bell from the clock in the main staircase. Five? Yeah. The bell rang five times, then ceased. It's five o'clock. We've only got an hour left. We don't have a lot of time left. Let's go. Slowly, one by one, they followed Junpei out of the bedroom. Actually, uh, before we get started... I was hoping you could do something for me. Junpei stopped in front of the door three and turned Ace, around. Ace, Seven, and Lotus, could you please place your palms on the red? Mm hmm? Huh. Huh? Why? If we need to get to the shower room, why don't we just... No, we're not going inside. Once you've authenticated, step away from the door. Why? Please, why? just do it. Or perhaps you don't want to know who killed Snake and Clover. Fuck does this have to do with anything? Junpei's impl implication was clear and Seven understood perfectly. <sighs> Fine. What about you, Ace? Lotus? I mean, there's no point in not doing it. Very well. Sure. Huh. Quickly, they pre pre pressed their pl palms onto the red. Once they had finished, they stepped away from the door as Junpei had instructed. Three asterisks shown from the red's display panel. I have this idea. I don't think this device responds to a hand placed on it. It instead reacts to a bracelet being brought close. You don't actually need a hand. Hmm. Junpei approached and held his bracelet over the scanner. He made quite sure he didn't place his palm on it and instead only brought his bracelet near it. The fourth asterisk appeared. I knew it. Just as Junpei had expected. 
It was possible to authenticate without placing one, one's palm on the red, so as long as the bracelet was brought near it. Junpei pulled the lever down. Door three opened like a hungry mouth. Nine seconds, long, nine long seconds passed. Interesting. And the door shut unfed. Uh, yep, he did it. Because he can open door three. Because if he has the number nine bracelet, he has ten, and then he gets snake. That's uh, twelve, which is three. Thus, he's able to do it. No one else would be able to. He is the one person to kill snake. The reason he killed Snake would probably, well, because, no, he wouldn't be able to recognize him. I was going to say if he was able to recognize that Ace was behind it still. Junpei walked slowly to the back of the others who were waiting some distance to the door, talking to one another. God, that's going to be the answer, isn't it? It has to be Ace. 